Esko is an associate professor and head of department in uh, social work and her research centers on uh, championing the need to utilize a more dynamic theory to examine child rearing and parent child relationships. And she adopts what she describes as a bilateral lens that conceptualizes both children and parents as agentic beings uh, influencing each other. Thank you. Good afternoon, thank you so much for this chance to present uh, my work in progress. This project is funded by the Social Science Research Council thematic grant uh, that was uh, awarded to me in 2017. So uh, the project is still uh, in progress. So my research team and I, we... My research team and I, we um, have several goals that we want to achieve through this uh, project. And one of uh, uh, the project title is Identifying Positive Adaptive Pathways of Low-Income Families in Singapore. One of the goals in this project is to develop a parent-child relational efficacy scale, which uh, I'm going to present to you today. Uh, it's a uh, work in progress. So, Existing research focuses largely uh, on the construct of self-efficacy and parental efficacy as aspect of human agency that enhance children's development and protect the functioning of parents and children um, under adversity. So the most well-known uh, efficacy scholar is Pandora. Most of us would know him. Um, he broadly defines efficacy as the belief that individual has the capacity to produce desirable outcomes through their own effort. And um, efficacy, therefore, is the ability to influence the outcome. Uh, it's a key personal resource that we, we, we have. Um, and it would very much affect the individual in the way he or she approaches um, goal or task or how he or she faces challenge. So um, although um, parent and children are both agent, um, and they have uh, capacity to make sense of the environment, engage in strategic goal uh, setting, uh, carry out directed action, mm -hmm. and um, uh, they have uh, uh, motives for self-determination. But most research focuses largely on parental agency or parental efficacy. So for instance, the, the, the last line you can see that um, there are many variants of uh, parental efficacy scale. And uh, the most used and most popular parental efficacy scale is the parent Parents' sense of competency scale, which has uh, 1,661 citations. So, uh, because our interest being in Department of Social Work, that naturally we are interested in low-income families. Um, so, low-income family experience considerable uh, intense amount of uh, economic hardship. However, um, through my previous study as well as other um, researchers' study, we found that there are many poor families actually or poor parents uh, who manage to raise children successfully despite their adversities. So um, parenting advocacy therefore is a very important personal uh, resource that enable parents to exercise their agency or, or advocacy effectively on behalf of themselves as well as their families. So in the absence of a, a sense of efficacy, the mounting stress of this low-income family will be very overwhelming and um, uh, the parents will find it hard to achieve their personal goals as well as achieve their family goals. Um, uh, that said, um, my research team um, argued that this exclusive focus in current research on parental uh, self-efficacy is one-sided. It therefore neglects the children's contribution to individual and family resilience. The success of children in their own development not only depends on parental efficacy, right? But it also depends on the children's ability to exp experience their own sense of efficacy within the parent-child relationship. So uh, it is um, one of the objectives in our project um, to test the hypothesis of, of um, as well as uh, closely observe the hypothesis that the children's own ability to influence others, meaning uh, in our context, parents, and cooperate with uh, uh, the other person's influence will in some way contribute to parental efficacy. And therefore, uh, we want to um, study a very a more balanced perspective of um, efficacy in the re uh, parental relationship context. So um, a less well-known scale, which is already existing, is called the Aphelia, uh, sorry, Aphelia Efficacy Scale, uh, inspired by Pandora. 
this group of researchers, they are essentially from Italy, they have developed a skill to measure children's efficacy, that is children's side of the dietic function in parent adolescence relationship. So this uh, filial efficacy skill focuses on adolescents' belief that they can manage their relationship with their parents in ways that foster satisfaction in their family life. So um, this filial scale, however, has not been used in a uh, younger age group. Um, so my work is usually the middle uh, childhood or slightly uh, younger children. However, based on um, earlier study by myself and other scholars, we have already found and uh, observed that uh, children, even from infant infancy, influence their parents to a great deal. But uh, no careful attention is paid up to this point, or, or little careful attention is paid on um, in what to what extent they influence and to what extent they mutually influence. Um, so, so we we would we would like to develop um, a scale which we are tentatively tentatively calling it parent child relational efficacy scale in short press, right? Um, so this proposed scale that we're going to develop um, is built on Mandara's uh, seminar idea of self-efficacy, but additionally it is guided by the social relational theories approach to parent-child relationship and family dynamics. So in short, uh, social relational theory, SRT, highlights that children's contribution is as, uh, con ch children's contribution are influential uh, in the family and uh, we want to place a balanced attention on both the parent and the child um, in the socialization process and in family dynamic. So SRT also argues that one's experience and uh, expression of agency depends also on the culturally embedded parent-child relationship context. So the relationship context is very key in the kind of work that we are trying to do. So. Um, so uh, we are looking at parent and child being embedded in a culturally uh, relevant uh, context of relationship and how they mutually influence each other in the interpersonal relationship. So this proposed scale differ from existing measure, uh, which is um, what we have seen just now, the parent, parent efficacy scale and one child efficacy scale. Um, it is different by us adopting a relational concept of influence and a sense of efficacy specific to interpersonal relationship. So um, relational efficacy is our key and um, we want to be able to contribute to a more complex understanding and recognition of um, parent-child dynamic. And we look at the parent-child dynamic uh, over three domains, which I will share with you later. Uh, therefore, we look at parent and child as parallel uh, construct parallel um, uh, variables in how they influence each other. They, they are parallel, but we know very well that in terms of power, it's different. Parents generally have more power uh, uh, than children. So this is um, just a diagram, you know, as the team works and think about how we uh, develop. This is like a working, working draft. Um, so as you can see, uh, this block re uh, refers to parents, this block refers to children. We look at parent and children dynamics, right? Uh, the relationship context over three, three important domains. First domain is, pro is protection and attachment. Second domain is um, intimacy. Third domain is authority. So these three domains are the same for parent and child. And un under every domain, there is a bi-directional measurement uh, for, from parent to child, child to parent. So um, this is how it looks like for now. <laughs> um, so the the items are uh, are formulated uh, very painstaking. The whole process is uh, just a lot of work, but very very satisfying. So um, the item development is taken one from literature um, and also our own uh, work, our own uh, evidence that we have collected over over the years as well as uh, from the phase one of the SSRC grant. So I have done uh, collected quite a large uh, qualitative data from phase one from there. We actually uh, uh, distilled uh, these items out and uh, done many, um, many rounds of piloting, cognitive testing. And uh, you can see parent and child, uh, they are parallel. So uh, say if we ask children's ability to influence parents, we also ask parents' perception and assessment of 
uh, uh, them being influenced by the children. So uh, they, they, they are parallel. So um, this scale will be implemented soon, hopefully in June. <laughs> that's my that's my dream, uh, and it will be collected over three time points. And um, over these three time points, uh, we would want to test this model. That is uh, whether relational agency, which is uh, which will be analyzed from our scale, uh, mediates between family financial stress and access to resources and children outcomes and family outcomes. Um, this is definitely relevant to uh, social work uh, um, practice because it will help us to understand um, to what extent uh, this relationship context uh, uh, can be understood um, more in depth and more systematically and also uh, to prepare ourselves to, uh, in the next phase um, to examine intervention. Uh, on the relationship context and to how to enhance the relational efficacy of parents and children in low-income families. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, questions, please. No, it's not fair, but would it be nice to have a small sample of well-to-do or middle-class parents? Because uh, you are looking at a relation. I mean, there is the context. You tell. Uh, you're taking a low-income family, maybe you're expecting, I don't know, they're not as good educator, but since the child children could be the same uh, with a, uh, more well-to-do people, middle class, it would be interesting. Uh, is it too big or are the study already done? Which shows maybe regardless of economic context, uh, the relationship uh, because you behave like this or that? Yeah. Or do you take very much into account the context, state policies, toward poverty, or I don't know what? Mm. Um, to have a comparison group is very ideal, but uh, I think you know, I need another study to do that. But uh, I must say that uh, um, looking at parent child dynamic in the parallel construct kind of approach, right, has been done in, in the West uh, from mainstream family, uh, middle income family already. But um, largely qualitative data, which is very helpful for our work in developing the scale. So uh, it is um, not not absent. It's just that um, a local context, as well as a larger quantitative sample, is not available for middle uh, income class. But in general, this parallel way of looking at parent-child dynamic is uh, quite quite new. So uh, not many other studies are available. Uh, taking this particular angle. Yes, there's the lady. Here. Okay, just uh, yeah. um, briefly if we can, thank you. I wonder if you have data in your current sample or you're thinking of collecting it in the future about the care structure in the home uh, separately from just SES because the parents are often not the only people sure. doing, providing primary care for, sure. care for the child. So helpers, aunties, grandmas, this kind of thing. Do you have that contextual data? Um, yes, uh, my data largely stem, I mean, uh, evidence that there are many caregivers, uh, grandparents, uh, or older sibling, particularly step families, where um, step uh, siblings are also caregivers. Yeah, uh, we do have, but not from the existing study. At this study, we have not uh, collected uh, data on that as yet. I just wonder um, if you're thinking about the parent child dynamic, there are other parent carer, uh, sorry, child carer dynamics that could be involved in the efficacy. Yeah, so actually, uh, we are hoping that this uh, parent child, right, uh, can be used also any kind of caregiver, yeah. uh, not necessarily parent. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. I think we need to move on. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm told we can take one more. So, hey, Kim. Oh, oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> sorry, I'm being no, it's all right. too... Uh, oh, no. Okay. So, quick question. So, when you say parents, uh, do they, I mean, uh, fathers and mothers, are they, I mean, are both of them included? Uh, so, are you going to... My current study, only yeah. mothers are included because I don't have enough money to include everybody. <laughs> okay. Um, but, um, we hope that the scale will be applicable to um, any adult caregiver, really. 
Mm, mm, yeah. mm, mm. But, but but it's good to, to have another study to just uh, also include father, but mm. I, I don't have that luxury for now. Yeah, I understand. Okay, I have another question about the interpretation. I mean, uh, how are you going to analyze I mean, parent-child relational efficacy? I mean, uh, so are you going to uh, get a one score from both part, I mean, the both agents who are not sort of things, you know, but then... That uh, is a yeah. question. Yeah, yeah. Actually, the team is still working on it right now. Oh. Uh, but the key construct is mm. connected and disconnected agents. Mm. So whether they are connected agents or they are disconnected agents oh. uh, make a di big difference in uh, the outcomes. I this see. is our hypothesis. Okay, okay, yeah. that's interesting. Okay, Thank thanks. You. Thank you for raising all those questions. The, the, the opportunity to pursue them a bit further in the tea break. So